All right, everybody, sorry about the delay. We will go ahead and get started with the finance meeting to discuss the tax rate. Um, we have with us Nancy Creed, Richard Johnson, and Wilfredo Lopez. Marcus is joining. Can you guys introduce yourselves? Oh, I'm Kathy Brown. Hey, Kathy. <laughs> And can everyone um, in the meeting room introduce yourselves? Uh, TJ Plant, CAFO for the city of Springfield. Patrick Burns, Comptroller. Jessica Guerra, Board of Assessors. Patrick Regal, uh, Chairman of the Board of Assessors. Hey, Patrick. Uh, but we put a director, but you can't see me. <laughs> Not see you at all. <laughs> I'm here. CAFO. <laughs> Hi, Lindsay. <laughs> Matthew Fontaine, Board of Assessors. Hey, Matthew. Hi, right, Chris, TJ, and Pat. All right. Um, so we are here to discuss the tax rate setting for the property tax, but it's not really the rate, it's, it's some factor, but I'll let um, Patrick explain it better than me. <laughs> sure. So we prepared uh, just a, a brief PowerPoint presentation. I thought it'd be helpful to start that. So if you can allow me to share the screen. Okay. Oh, count, um, Council President Williams is here. Hold on, Patrick, I will do that right now. All right. Okay, well, that works. Um, this is obviously 22 uh, tax classification discussion. And for the values for fiscal 22, we use a physical status date as of June 30th. And we basically take what was there at the parcel on June 30th, move it to January 1st to determine what the full and fair cash value is as of that date. For residential properties, we typically use uh, market sales. So we look at the market uh, to determine what the valid sales are to compare it to parcels that have not sold to determine what the value is. And for commercial, industrial, and apartments, we use an income approach to determine the valuation. This is a slide that is showing what our taxable value has done since fiscal 20. So you'll see it was 8.7 billion in fiscal 20. And we are nearly at 10 billion for fiscal 22. Uh, and this chart on the left here, the bar chart, is showing the percent of the total values per class. So the lighter blue is residential, the commercial and industrial is green, and the darker blue is personal property. And you will certainly see in this chart that the residential values have increased uh, substantially over the last couple of years. Uh, as you all probably know, the market is extremely hot. This is a chart showing that we are moving away from the levy ceiling, which is very good news for the city of Springfield. So values are increasing. Uh, you'll see the fiscal 18 and 19 and a little bit of 20 that we were only able to levy up to the levy ceiling. And as a refresher, the levy ceiling is determined by taking your total property values and it's two and a half percent of that. So with a declining market, it puts a real strain on the ability of the municipality to raise uh, money. Uh, so for fiscal 21 and 22, we are moving away from that levy ceiling, which is a really, again, it's a great sign uh, and it's a good news story for the city of Springfield. Next, we're looking at the total taxable value versus the share of the levy. And this is important because this is what the city council really needs to kind of determine uh, when we're setting our, our factor in our tax rates. So if you look at the total taxable value for the residential, it's 74.38% uh, versus 25.62% for commercial. And what we do in a split rate community is we shift some of that levy, sort of that tax burden from the residents to the commercial, industrial, and personal property. And you'll see in fiscal 21, what that result was, instead of a 74.38% of the levy for residential, they ended up paying 58.33% of the levy. So that's uh, kind of really what we're focused on for these tax uh, classification hearings. 
This is just looking at the 10 year average single family home tax history uh, in the city of Springfield. Uh, you'll certainly see, I, I don't wanna you know, stay on this slide too long, but you, know, you can certainly take a look at it. Uh, fiscal 12, the average value was 133,800. Uh, we are looking at an average value this year of 185,100. Uh, as a reminder, fiscal 21, it was the 172.9. Uh, we obviously don't know the tax rates yet, so we can't determine, uh, you know, to fill in the rest of that chart. This is the City of Springfield tax levy history. Uh, and again, the single tax rate on the top line uh, for fiscal 18 and fiscal 19, because we were at our levy ceiling, it is a $25 single tax rate. We are moving away from the levy ceiling. So if we were a single rate community, it would be $24.78 and 20, and 21 was 24.11. Uh, and uh, ultimately for the tax rate for this I'm year- I'm sorry, Patrick, can you go back to that screen just one more second? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. And we can go back to any of these slides too. I know there's a, uh, quite a bit of information on some of them, but this just kind of sets out the timeline for us. Uh, ideally, we would set the tax factor on or before December 1st. I'm trying to see if we get a meeting potentially scheduled for the Monday after Thanksgiving. Uh, and the reason why is because we need to have Department of Revenue certify our tax rates uh, before we can start the billing process. And internally, uh, we have that date uh, by December 7th. So if we could uh, adopt a rate uh, kind of early the, the week after Thanksgiving, it would allow us time to set everything up internally with IT and also generate uh, a tax bill timely. So that's just a brief uh, presentation there. Does anyone have any questions on any of that information? Uh, yes, this is Freddie. Um, on when you said you, you showed a graph that showed the percentage um, of the levy that the residential paid versus, yeah, that one right there. Now, what about actual um, properties? Like a, it says percent paid, right? But what is the actual percentage of properties, like um, as far as value, based on value? Do you have that number? I think what you might be referring to is right underneath that. Mm -hmm. so you'll see in, in 21, the taxable value is 7 billion for residential. Got it. So, so to that point, this is Richard. To that point, when we think about residential, are we thinking the city in general? Are we, because I know that some, some areas are valued higher than others. So this tax rate would be the same regardless to where a residence might be. That's right. Uh, so what we do is we, we value properties in a number of different neighborhoods. And, and honestly, I don't remember how many neighborhoods off the top of my head, uh, but that's a, a critical component uh, to determine value. So it is the same tax rate, but when we do subdivide the city and the neighborhoods, those sales in the neighborhood are the driving force for the values in that neighborhood. And I would also like to point out here that um, the year a property was built is also a key component. I know some people think when there's a brand new development in the neighborhood that that alone, they're going to be compared to those houses. That's not, not true uh, at all. So we do look at neighborhood, year built, the style of the house, all of those go, go into the comparable sales to determine what the full and fair cash market value is for a house. Let me so, just add to that a fact that when you mentioned what's a residential property, we're talking about the large apartment buildings, the two family, three family homes, single family homes, uh, and child daycare centers. Uh, those are all taxed at the residential rate. For a commercial property, we're looking at hotels, warehouses, shopping centers, restaurants, that sort of thing. So a quadruplex is considered commercial? I'm sorry, what is? A quadruplex, like a four, four, four unit. family unit. All apartments are residential. 
All apartments are residential? Yes. So even large apartments with multiple hundred units, those are still taxed at the, the residential rate. Nancy, you raised your hand. And I just want to welcome Councillor Letterman, um, who just joined us. Well, joined us a while ago, but welcome. thank you. Hi. Thank you. Just a quick question on this slide so I understand. So if we look at the share of the value versus share of the levy. So last year, we, the commercial had 26% of the value and paid 42%. Am I reading that correctly? That's right. We had a bigger, okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right. Okay, so the um, mayor just put out a press release uh, regarding the uh, proposed uh, tax rates and the recommendation uh, from the mayor's office. I'm um, sure you probably have not had an opportunity to see that yet. Um, I can certainly present tonight what the proposed levy would do and what the tax rates are, uh, but I know we have another meeting scheduled, so maybe it makes sense to just kind of, I can present that now um, and we can discuss it a little bit tonight and maybe a little more in depth on. Uh, I just have a quick question. Um, it, it seems like every year, um, well, because we've been on a rising real estate market, um, but every year the, the amount of the levy goes up, um, is there, and I'm not talking about in a declining market, but just in this type of market, is there any reason why we would not go to the max on the levy or is it, or is it just every year you guys are just going to push it to the max? Well, there's certainly, uh, you know, we have a uh, pension, outstanding pension liability. So there's numerous factors that go into what determines uh, the levy. Uh, so it's it's most financially prudent to capture as much as we possibly can. And partly uh, history has shown us with when the market decreases and we are at our levy ceiling, uh, that is a major issue for not only Springfield, but any levy ceiling community. And, you know, obviously the, the housing market is super hot right now. Um, hopefully that continues. It's, you know, a, a typical homeowner, it's their, their biggest asset. Uh, so we would love to see that continue. Um, however, the reality is, is there could certainly be a burst in this bubble. Uh, and if, if things trend the other way, uh, that raises significant problems for us. So I don't know if that answers your question. Well, it, it doesn't, it doesn't. I guess I'm just trying to figure out, um, you, you, you guys are at almost $10 billion now for the levy limit, right? For fiscal year 22. Um, I just want a, a point of clarification that 10 billion is just value. Tax values, value. okay, you're, you're right, correct. Um, but at, at the um, ceiling of the levy, um, because you guys take different factors, like you just mentioned the pension, et cetera, um, is there ever, a, do you guys ever plan on not going to the max? I mean, I know that money is used for, you know, to run the city, et cetera, and, you know, to fill in gaps, et cetera. Um, but so basically if it was, uh, let's say it's, it's 10 billion in value, if it went up to 20 billion in value, does that mean, uh, you guys are going to try to collect taxes based on the 20 billion? Is there ever an end to that? So let me back up a little bit and talk about proposition two and a half, uh, which sort of dictates what the city can raise. So even if, even if that levy ceiling quadruples next year, there's still a cap at what the city can collect in, in revenue and levy. And what it is, is it looks at what the levy limit was in the prior year, adds two and a half percent to that, and then you also get any new growth that has been certified by the Department of Revenue. And new growth can be, you know, houses that are created. Uh, I know there's a couple of apartments uh, that are being uh, um, uh, developed and renovated. So all of that is deemed new growth. Uh, our biggest source of new growth is actually the utility companies because they're investing in the city, uh, well, frankly, in the state uh, every single year. So uh, there, is a, there is a cap to what the city can raise. But we, but we, we won't see it go like let's say um, fiscal year twenty. Um, 
versus 22 and it's going to keep going up. I mean, I've done, I think this is my fifth year on this committee and I always see it go up and up and up, but is there ever a time that said that you guys are going to say, this is what we need, even though we can go this much higher, we don't need to, is, is that possible? Uh, well, it, it's not financially prudent. So, no. well, while... so <clears throat> let me jump in there. Uh, this is TJ. So really, uh, so what we want to do as a municipality is maximize our ability to grab all the, the levy capacity that we can. And then what we've been doing the last two years is putting free cash on the table as a way to mitigate that growth. Um, so what we're showing is to the state and DOR that we're maximizing our revenue. And what we're doing for the taxpayers is putting revenue on the table to reduce the rates uh, uh, more than they would be if we just tax the max. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, it's just, it's just, I know it's tied to so many other things. Um, and I know you guys are looking at it, you know, for revenue purposes, but I guess I'm thinking about the taxpayers in the city and, um, you know, we're, we're paying into, it, it seems like, um, it just keeps going up and there's never any relief saying, okay, this is what we need. And it's more like, this is how much we can get out of it versus this is what we need. You know, it's, it's just a different type of philosophy. And I'm just wondering no, I if that's ever going to change. Exactly what you're saying. Uh, unfortunately, an urban, poor urban city like Springfield, we need every bit of it. What we're yeah. able to do, since we're in a strong financial position, is to put uh, revenue from free cash into reducing the levy. So yeah. it sends the right message to DOR and it sends the message to our residents that we understand we want to minimize the tax increases to the extent possible as well. And the only way we can do that is levying all of it and then reducing that levy by putting revenue on the table. Got it. Thank you. All right. I just wanted to um, explain for folks how the meeting should run. So if you do have a question or comment, please use your raise hand button and then I will um, call on the people in line as the chair. Um, and I just wanted to, um, cause I know that Richard's new and, um, Freddie, you're not new, but you know, might've forgot you only come once a year. <laughs> so, yeah, I just wanted to, um, say that, but, um, thank you. It was great information, great feedback. What I'm looking for is that table that shows the different rates. I did actually see, um, the press release and I think it's great that the mayor's using 2.5, million of free cash to reduce the um what is it the tax value or the amount that we're collecting it, the, yeah the, the levy so it's it would uh, reduce taxes uh for commercial and uh, residential uh, so i'm actually glad to see that some of that um, money is being put to use for that so wait, I know 22 and 23 but did you want to bring up the press release or okay hear that hang on one moment okay so i don't know if i can make this full screen or not so uh, my apologies but the top left with the fiscal 22 is looking at our taxable value and our levy uh, for this year. So this does assume the two and a half million dollar uh, free cash uh, is, put, is put in there. Uh, so based on that, we can scroll down a little bit and see what the tax rates look like based on that. And the ones that are highlighted in yellow are last year's information. The uh, line that's highlighted in orange, I would typically have mayor's recommendation, uh, but I didn't know when the press release was going out. So uh, that is what was proposed uh, by the mayor, which would represent an eight cent decrease in the residential tax rate, a 19 cent reduction in the commercial, industrial, and personal property tax rate that would result in a 260, and I think specifically it's $215.77 uh, would be the increase on the average uh, single family tax payer. $250? $216, this line right here. Oh, $216. 
And this is what the city council is tasked uh, with. And it, it is, you are correct, uh, Councillor, when you said that the, the vote is going to be on the residential factor, not the rates. The factor leads to the two rates. Um, so we'll just need to make sure it's uh, that the full vote that that's uh, what is proposed. Uh, it's the factor. So I know that last year, um, I think it was Mike Fenton created a chart that showed what the average increase of the bills were over the past five years. Would you would you guys happen to have that? I very well might on the on the. Um, I think I do have it on the. For, for the residential side. If I don't have it on here, I can absolutely get that. Okay, here, this is actually uh, 10 years. 10 so years. So here's the average tax bill and the, and the change. To me, 216 seems like a lot. Um, for especially for seniors and folks with a fixed income, 216 increase of a tax bill still seems like a lot um, for a resident in, in those type of situations, um, especially in the climate with COVID and people losing jobs and I don't know. Um, can you go back to the fa tax factor? Uh, Councilor Whitfield, keep in mind that yep. is average change. Uh, we did explore the median change, uh, meaning 50% of the bills would be above or below the number when we removed parcels that were considered new growth. Uh, we're looking at more of like $179 uh, median change. So what happens is um, where my parents live, they usually get an increase in the bill. And so I got to hear that. So I'm just trying to figure out, and they're like, why'd you do that? And I'm like, it wasn't me, but I'm just trying to. Um... Well, one of the issues uh, to be perfectly clear is, is, you know, the residential market is so strong versus the commercial industrial. And if you look at the top of this chart, you'll see what the CIP value was last year to this year. And uh, there's not much of an increase there. We can't see the chart. It's still, I think you got to go out and come back in because it's still showing the um, 10 year single family. Okay, my apologies. That's okay. Okay. You so, see that now, Councilor? Uh, I'm sorry? You see it now? Yes. And um, Richard Johnson had his hand raised. Richard? Yes, I wanted to um, kind of, I don't know, ask or say, the housing market, you're right, there, there's a great big bubble and it's a booming market at the moment for those who are in the business of buying and selling residential homes as a business. But folks who um, have no intention on, on selling their homes, um, that tax rate does does, you know, kind of, no, it doesn't kind of, it really does have an impact on their monthly income, particularly those who uh, don't have a lot of disposable cash and are on fixed incomes. Um, I, I just want us to be very mindful of the fact that yes, the residential market is on fire for those who are buying and selling and flipping and doing all that other stuff. But for those folks who aren't doing that, who aren't in that market, who are just trying to live, um, that that's not the case for them. I I, I understand that completely, um, and I, I'm obviously very sympathetic. At the same time, our role as the board of assessors here is just to simply determine the full and fair cash value of each house. We are simply reflecting the market. Um, and I know that just because someone hasn't sold their house, their value still has increased, which is good news also because it's typically their, their, their largest asset. So I, I recognize there is obviously a balance between, yes, you have a, a greater asset, but you also now have a greater tax burden uh, because of that. So um, it's a... 
And Mr. Johnson may add that Springfield single family average tax bills are among some of the lowest in the state. We're in the bottom 10%. Uh, and I think last year, uh, you know, we're about this, about, you know, maybe 6%. Uh, so 92, 94% of bills in the state are greater on average. So Springfield is an affordable place to live still uh, when considering tax rates uh, and tax bills. Yeah, and also, but we have to say that it's relative because the income in the other part of the state is also higher. Mm -hmm. And so it's all relative to um, where you live and, and how much money you make. Um, there's communities that make a lot more money and can afford to pay higher tax bills than Springfield. It is affordable if you're making a decent living, but if you're not, if you're in the low income bracket, which we also have a high concentration of low income families, um, an increase of 216 is still a lot. Um, I know Councillor Letterman has his hand raised, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And, you know, I, I just wanted to speak briefly to the strength of the, the residential real estate market that was mentioned. And, and I agree uh, and can appreciate the role of the Board of Assessors in assessing that value. Uh, but I think that, that we need to take into account um, the inflation of those values when we're setting the rate. Because while that, that value might be there today, I don't think it will be there several years from now. And certainly many families are not going to be accessing uh, that capital that they have on paper as a result of it. So mm -hmm. if, if the assessor's office must consider uh, that value, then I think uh, this committee and the council need to consider the rate when it comes to that and take a hard look at the budget and see what is it we really need to raise? How does that square with the free cash being offered by the mayor? And then what can we do on our end uh, to make up for that? So while maybe folks will see that assessed value rise, they might not see such a large increase. And I'm hopeful to have those conversations in the coming weeks. Uh, and I, it sounds like this committee is on top of it as well. So uh, that, that was my two cents. I, I unfortunately have to log off, but I am glad to hear the conversation headed in that direction. Uh, because that's been my biggest concern is this hot market that we see that for most people isn't really meaning more money for them uh, and could mean a higher tax bill. So that's our concern. Thank you, Councillor. Um, thank you for attending. I know you said you had to hop off, but um, your points are very well taken and I actually agree with them. So thank you for your comments and thank you for coming when you could and joining us. Um, Councillor Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we, we, you know, we've talked about residential a lot, and one question I always like like to ask from year to year is that of, of course, the, the business community. And uh, kind of just turning my attention to Nancy, and, and I want to hear your thoughts on the, the mayor's recommended rate for commercial, and if you have any thoughts on whether that's ideal for the business community or if you're taking, you know more of a burden um, this year than last, and just any thoughts you have. Through the chair, if I may, I very much appreciate that question. Um, I think we are in support of the mayor's recommendation. When you look at the how much we absorbed last year during COVID and the shift, where I think the business community took up more than 40% um, of the burden, um, we very much appreciate the fact that that gap is starting to slow down. Um, I think it's fair because it gives the residents some relief and it gets the businesses some relief. Um, they are still struggling. We just did a poll maybe a week ago um, and we had nearly 60% of our business community that responded are still either greatly or significantly being impacted by COVID. Um, and I, I think their recovery is gonna be, um, gonna take them a really long time Mm -hmm. um, and and one recent piece, um, which I don't know if you've heard about, but the business community is taking on seven billion dollars of debt. That's a B with a that's a capital B um, because of all the unemployment claims that have happened during COVID. We get it, we understand it, but that's an additional burden. Um, that's a lot of money. That's like a twenty-year mortgage for each business to absorb seven billion dollars. So we very much appreciate. Um, the offer of free cash, I think that is helpful to all parties. Um, and we really do think that the mayor's recommendation um, is a fair one. 
I appreciate it. through the chair. I appreciate that, um, Nancy. I just wanted to add, just in relate as it relates to the residential piece. You know, I, I certainly agree with Councilor Letterman and Councilor Woodfield and uh, Mr. Johnson uh, on just kind of maybe perhaps taking a closer look at the residential factor. Uh, one thing that I always uh, always ask for too, in addition, is kind of the. I, I know we've been provided uh, the council has been provided a list of or the breakdown, I should say, of how the homes in each ward and district are being affected. And I know Pine Point and 16 Acres are, are of course home to a lot of single family homes, uh, probably the, the higher concentration. Uh, and I, I, I wanna be sensitive to the fact that, you know, their bills have been going up steadily from year to year regardless. So if, if that, if that um, optic can be produced for us again, I, I'd love to see the breakdown of kind of the residential piece uh, from from each district, if possible. Thank you. Now, is that something that can be provided to the council? Certainly. I may have something now. Let me just take a quick look. Okay. And while you look for that, I just wanted to um, comment on the things that Nancy said and also um, some of my own comments. So one thing that Nancy said, I, I totally get it. I have a small business of my own, so the spready, um, and I definitely get where the industry is as far as businesses, but there has not been the amount of relief for individuals um, that there have been for businesses as far as like grants and, and things like that. I know that unemployment is through the roof and things like that, but there has been a lot of SBA loans, PPP, um, a lot of um, grants and opportunities for businesses to get funding that individuals don't necessarily have access to. And I know that because I have a business, so I get all that information. Um, in addition, the, the income for families probably is not really increasing this year, yet the tax bill is, and we have a lot of seniors in our community. And one thing that I don't see on the chart is how much the, increase is for the business community with their tax bill. So I seen there's a screen that says the business value increased by maybe $400,000. Is it somewhere around there, 400,000? How much of the bill will increase based on that value? I don't see a line that says that. And so if their bills are gonna decrease, I, I wouldn't want to put burden of an increase on residential and decrease on the business community. I just don't think that that's a fair um, thing to do I, because a lot of the business community don't even live in Springfield, but get the benefit from the people that do. In addition, I think that we have about $27 million of free cash that's certified just about 26 something. I think the mayor could have done a little bit better I think 2.5 million is good this year and 2.5 million is good next year, but I think you could have done better to make sure that the residents in the city of Springfield tax bill is reduced even more than 216, average $216 increase. So, I mean, I'm not satisfied with the mayor's recommendations. I'm just gonna put it out there. We have 27 million in free cash I am not satisfied with 2.5 million um, to reduce the um, tax rate. I don't want to put the burden on, shift the burden to the businesses. So I think that we could have done a little bit better when we looked at the free cash. Um, Freddie? Um, can, can you pull back the chart um, with the highlighted uh, version of the mayor's recommendation real quick? Yes. So, um, Patrick, if your team can get me the increases also of the um, business community's um, average bill, that would be wonderful. I'm trying to find the, it's the internet one. I, get, I guess my reason being, um, and this is directed towards Nancy. Nancy, you, um, you know, you've always gone to bat for the business community. I do a lot with the business community as well. I guess I don't understand um, why you like his recommendation because regardless the the mill rate, which is what we're setting, right? We're talking about the mill rate here. So the mill rate 
is is still going up for commercial on this. It's it's going way up, isn't it? So well, it's going from thirty nine oh four to thirty nine point two three, um, which, and and you said the the gap is becoming less, but I I'm from this chart that is up now, I, I kind of see the opposite of that. Am I wrong? Yeah, I'm sorry. I actually didn't hear the, the, the full piece, so my apologies. Um, but the overall tax rate for commercial is going down uh, on this proposal on 19 cents. Uh, and also the gap is going down, which is a, a, a metric uh, used by the chamber. Uh, okay, so got 6, it. 0.06 to 5.68. So it's kind of bringing the, the, the levy uh, born by both classes a little closer together. Under that okay. Metric. So the the highlighted is where we're at today. The highlight, the, the yellow. yellow highlights, yes, are where we are today. Okay. Which is the mayor's recommendation. Okay. And while you know, while we're still on this chart, uh, but for the, the two point five million dollars, I think the average increase would be approximately two hundred and sixty five dollars for the single family. Two hundred and sixty five dollars. Right. Is the average increase? That's what it would have been, but for the two and a half million dollars of free cash. So, um, do you have a chart that says what the increase for the business community bills would be, average? Uh, no, uh, not here right now, but we can certainly uh, get that to you. Okay, because I, I would I would need to see that to. You sure. know, can you send us this? Because we usually get of this course. chart ahead of time um, before the yeah. meeting. Sure. The press release went out a little later. So I, I would have sent this. Uh, my apologies, but I absolutely am happy to send that. And also for President uh, Williams, the request for the neighborhood, we can absolutely have that. Uh, I can send that out and we can have that for the next meeting as well. Thank you. Thank you. And I know that the council um, usually wants the 10 year increase of the tax bill so if you could send that along because they're probably going to ask for it yeah. um if you could send that along that would be great too sure that was on the powerpoint i'm, I'm happy to send oh, that. oh yeah. you're going to send the powerpoint out all right, do that. Okay. Okay. all right so i don't know guys um i wouldn't vote for this i wouldn't vote for this rate um only because of the 216 dollars, and i don't know what we're comparing that to as far as the business goals and I also know that we have a lot of free cash and we could have done better. Um, so this isn't something that I would vote for or propose, is, but it's up to the council. Um, ultimately, I don't know if we could see if we can get another million dollar in, um, decrease in the property value to help out the residents a little bit, but 216 for someone on fixed income like my parents is a lot of money, um, even if it's broken down into the quarters because they're on fixed income. So they're just really pinching pennies right now to scrape by. They don't qualify for public um, assistance because of their income, which isn't, you know, cliff effect. It isn't much over um, low income. So that that's not that just doesn't work for me. Any other questions or comments by the committee or yes, um, Nancy. If I may, Madam Chair, do you have a sense of where you might want this committee to land? Well, I need to like look at it more because uh, I definitely don't want to ship the whole lot of burden onto the business community. However, I definitely don't want to increase the average bill by $216 for the residential community. So I think maybe when we get the power plan, I could look at it a little bit more that I might have a recommendation, but I also want to know what's the increase of the business community bills. Is it $50? Is it $216 also? Like I, I want to see how fair it is um, with both communities and try to be as fair as possible. Freddie, uh, is that, does that answer your question, Nancy? Okay. Uh, Freddie and then Richard. Um. Tracy just mentioned another million dollars, and then um, the mayor mentioned two point five million dollars as far as free money um, to be used in this. My question is: Does that really change anything? Because what is the total levy amount? Uh, the total levy is uh, two hundred thirty-seven million three fifty-eight 
$463. So, so it's basically roughly almost 1%, um, that $2.5 million, close to 1%. So how much does that really affect the, let's, since we've been talking about the residential tax bills, how much would another million dollars actually affect the tax bills? It's about $25 per million. $25 per million? Right. So the average tax uh, liability would go down $25 per million. So right now we're saving uh, 50, 60, what is it? 62.50 basically? Like sixty, oh. like $60 about because of right. that 2.5 million? Correct. Okay. And, all right, thank you. So the, the bill would be closer to 191 than 216. Um, it still looks better visually to me. Um, $25 helps somebody who's on a fixed income, but um, we got to think of something. Richard and then Nancy. I think my question is around the um, quote, free money that the mayor has offered. And I'm unfamiliar with the process, but he offered the two and change. So I'm wondering, is there any likelihood that that would be increased or is there some process by which um, he can be either asked or compelled to increase that, that, that amount? Uh, that's an excellent question. I haven't had a, a conversation with the mayor going above two and a half million this year, two and a half million next year. Uh, where we were looking at the free cash is, you know, we already have $12 million of, of uh, rescue plan money, one-time revenue built into this budget that will not be there next year. Uh, we just transferred money um, to the, from the stabilization reserve account to the tune of $5 million that I would like to replenish with the free cash. We have 10% um, of that money needs to go towards uh, pension benefits, OPEP. And so the money uh, runs up quickly. So the two and a half is where we thought we were comfortably bringing it down, the roughly $60 down to the two uh, sixteen. I have not spoken with him about any desire to go above two and a half, but I can have that conversation. So with all that you just mentioned, the 5 million, and let's talk about what it's for. The 5 million is to pay for police misconduct cases. Um, we can give five million to police misconduct cases. We can give five million to property tax decrease. I'm just gonna throw that out there. But um, it was five million for that, twelve million. So that that comes up to seventeen million. So that still leaves roughly ten million dollars on the table. I mean, if you're just talking about twenty-seven to seventeen, sure, the math works out. But we also have ten percent of twenty-seven going into the stable, um, the OPEP stabilization fund. So another 2.7. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, you know, obviously we wait and see for snow and ice and some of those other areas. So um, it's just amazing how quickly the money can go. That's all I'm saying. But I will definitely have the conversation uh, with the mayor on if there's any desire to go above to that. It's just too tough times to increase people's bills by $216 so, on average. Some are going to be 265 <laughs> Some are gonna be lower, but the folks that fall in on the high end is just two tough times for that. So we recognize that, and that's why the two and a half million was put on the, the table. And then also in addition to that, we have the senior RFP, the housing assistance RFP, small business, new business RFPs all out there. Uh, unfortunately, we're directly prohibited from using ARPA funds to really have any meaningful re reduction in the tax rate. I mean, we, I hate this conversation as much as you do every, every year because no one likes to talk about this and no one likes to do it. Uh, we just need to fund uh, the government and try to do it in a compassionate way. But there are programs out there, exemption programs. I mean, we're going to do everything we can to mitigate and to help uh, offset or offer other programs that we can within our purview offer to make uh, some, to have some assistance. Um, I think Nancy had had her hand raised before. So Nancy, then Freddie, there's <laughs> not that many of us. So we're just going back and forth. Thank you. I, um, and I have to be honest. I mean, I think the business community is really trying to be compassionate. We understand. And when you look at last year, the fact that we didn't ask for any reduction in the middle of COVID when businesses were closed um, and granted 
businesses got PPP, but that was to keep people employed. Um, if they didn't take advantage of those programs, and you look at our unemployment insurance rate, right? I mean, there would be much more people that were unemployed. So I think we're really trying to be fair and compassionate um, and to take such a huge additional burden last year. I think it was, you know, like 15% or whatever. Um, and then to take that on again, it's just, it's really hard for these folks to swallow. So I just need to go on record um, that we're, we're trying to work with you and we're really trying to be fair. Um, but at the same time, we're struggling too. I mean, we've got our small businesses that are, are, are struggling to keep their doors open. You look at hotels, restaurants, people are still not going in there. Um, so I just, I, I appreciate very much um, the position that you guys are in. Um, and I just hope that that you can appreciate the position we're in. Yeah, we're all in it together. <laughs> you know, Freddie and I are both part of the business community as well. So definitely understand that. Um, and, you know, it's just a hard situation and COVID made it even worse, you know? <laughs> so it's just like, we, we got to find a balance. And I think um, getting to that balance will be adding more free cash um, this year to reduce the burden on the residential community so that we can accept or become close to the rate that the mayor um, recommended as far as the rate goes. But um, you showed the screen, I'm sorry, Freddie, you showed the screen mm -hmm. that last year, the business community took 41% took of the burden, whatever. How much would that be with this rate? How much of the burden? would shift to the commercial for 2022. You guys are muted. Um, you're muted. Um, yeah, I was trying to see what I had oh, as an option still. So your question really speaks to um, what the gap produces for a number, a uh, number the chamber likes to use. Um, so that's really showing uh, the difference in the percent of the value versus the percent of what the levies paid. Um, so that 15.68. So, so like where it says 58, 33 and 41, 69, that's for FY21. What would that be for FY22? We're looking at FY22 here on the screen. I think if you're seeing the penny rate sheet, is that what you, are you seeing the, the penny rate sheet? Uh, I guess it's the penny rate. Yes, yeah, the rate. Yeah, penny rate. Sheet. Okay. Yeah. So I would just kind of highlight here for for. Oh, the, it it dropped. Oh, it's forty percent. I see it. So fifty nine percent and forty percent. Thank you, Councilor Williams. Thank you for joining and, and your comments were definitely appreciated. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, everyone. So it, it reduced a little bit to 40.2% and 59.98%. Yeah. Yeah. It does increase the shift. It increased the shift on the residential side and decreases it on the um, commercial business side. So the gap and the shift both speak to the commercial, uh, levying more onto the commercial um, you know, the gap really is the percent of the commercial full fair cash value less the percent of the commercial levy. The shift. I'm really only looking at the levy percent in the middle. So you certainly could compare the levy percents as well. Uh, I, I would also point out here that the CIP shift, uh, if you can see this here, there is mm -hmm. a map on that, that we can put onto the commercial, industrial, and personal property uh, values. Uh, and that's 1.75. Uh, there is a number, you know, municipalities never want to go over $40 uh, of, a, of a tax rate for them. I can certainly bring this chart out. What was presented here, there are more options than this. 
Um, this is just, you know, kind of what we, what I thought would be most uh, sort of reasonable. Um, and I kind of wanted to show all of the numbers from last year. So that's why the chart is the way it is. Uh, but this can be expanded out more for our, uh, a future discussion. I wouldn't advocate for that, uh, honestly, but uh, we can certainly present it. Mm, I think this is good. I, I wouldn't want to go over 40 either. <laughs> so, um, Freddie? Okay. Um, I think it's, I think it's kind of like, um, it, this is an incomplete conversation we have every year because I think the, the big factor behind it is the city budget, right? Am I right? Like it all ties into the city budget and the city's expenses and planning and everything else. So I just, I hate the fact that this is a completely separate conversation from the budget. And then when budget comes around, nobody's thinking tax factors or mill rates or any of this stuff. And I think it has to be addressed from a global perspective, from a budget standpoint, when that's taking place, instead of having these completely separate conversations, because we're not really able to, we're not able to say, hey, decrease the budget by five million dollars we we don't have that ability on the tax committee i mean we don't even have that conversation not to say that that's what would be recommended but i i just don't see an in-depth um look to reduce the city budget um to be able to help out the tax burden and, and i think it's all tied in together but we keep these conversations so separate we're not really doing much. I mean, regardless if we go way down or way up, it's still the same burden is there. And I think we have to start talking about the actual tax burden. So uh, Freddie, I can comment on that. So Massachusetts is unique that we have a bifurcated process that the expenditure budget is adopted uh, for June, July 1st, essentially, and the revenue budget is adopted now. And we've enjoyed the time between the budget is adopted to the time now where the revenue. So the board of assessors can look at values and sales all summer long and early fall to determine where we end up for uh, the tax rate. You are right. Uh, we don't talk about it because we don't really have a good sense uh, of cutting, say, if we cut five million from the budget, what that would mean at the time of setting the tax rate. Uh, or to at the time of adopting the budget, but then coming to set the tax rate, you're 100% right. That's by design by the Commonwealth. And that's where, you know, I can tell you, uh, Councilor Whitfield and all the councilors asked for that information. We just never prepared to link a tax bill to a budget because we, have, we it's an incomplete picture on that end. It is, it can be very frustrating on, for, for everybody. Um, but it's separated like that for a reason. I didn't. I don't know why officially or whatever. But that's kind of where we're at. So we do talk about it every budget and every time this year. We talk about it because, like, we set the amount that we're going to bring in for property tax, but we don't. We don't really know. And then we have to meet it. We have to meet our revenue goals one way or the other. And that's why we have to you know, do this process, but because it's timing, we, we can't really have like those thorough conversations like that. It's just timing, but it's not anything that it, the city of Springfield put in place or anything like that. It's just, just a state, state law. So we do, we always talk about it and it's always like, nothing we can do really, but you are always welcome to come to the budget meetings too. And just, you know, and, and, and provide your comments or feedback. Um, whenever you want. We'll let you know when those meetings happen too. Um, Richard? So if this is an, has been and continues to be an ongoing albatross around the process, what can be done to mitigate it? What, what, what can be done to address that? I mean, you say it, it's a state, it's a Commonwealth issue. So is it something that we need to be trying to have is it something that we want to have our legislators at that level addressing? Or is it something that we just are content with going from year to year with? I would defer to the assessors because they know the time frame that they have to do the work and things like that. So would it be easier to, to have 
this change to around budget time because it's also, yeah, I don't know. No, because we're um, we look at the value of the property as of January first. Uh, however, the physical status of what is actually there isn't until June thirtieth. So that's typically after the budget has already been voted on. So we don't even know really what the numbers look like at that point. Uh, we don't know anything about uh, growth really yet. That all needs to be certified by the state, uh, and that doesn't happen until this time of year. Uh, so it's it's almost an impossible task uh, at that point in, in you know May or June. I mean, it's always worth a discussion, Richard. You know, get our local legis um, state delegation on board, and let's have a conversation about it, and you know, see why it is the way it is. I don't know. It's worth the conversation to me because this is this is tough every year. Yeah, and and I would I would really because, I mean, I wouldn't have the kind of history and information that would be as relevant and as uh, knowledgeable as, as folks like who are in this in this room would have to pose to some of the legislatures or whoever it is that we need to talk if it's even and even to describe whether or not it's it's a worthwhile conversation not that it's a worthwhile conversation but a worthwhile change to implement if in fact we're talking about something that we're going to be dealing with this and my children will probably be dealing with this unless somebody decides that it's something that needs to be changed. And if it is, then the folks who know most about it should be part of that conversation. I certainly appreciate that, that question. Um, and you know, that's potentially a topic for another kind of subcommittee meeting. Uh, I do just want to sort of emphasize our role here for this tax rate committee and the city council within the next week or two is to vote on the, the tax factor. Um, so it's certainly an interesting question posed, uh, but maybe more appropriate for another uh, committee uh, discussion. Thank you. And we could always schedule that Richard and bring some of the state um, delegation to one of those meetings, especially the state finance committee, because they may know um, more about the questions that you and Freddie or concerns that you and Freddie brought up. So um, I, I, I could um, have a meeting scheduled and we could talk about it more. Nancy, and I'm not going to keep you guys longer than this hour. So Nancy's going to be our final question or comment. Thank you. Sorry about that. Can I, may I just go back to the mayor's recommendation one more time to, so that I understand when we talk about the, the shift so even though both rates would go down with the mayor's recommendation, the business community is taking on additional burden. Is that correct? The shift is going from 1.62 or whatever to 1.64. I think you're on mute, Patrick. I don't know if you're answering. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, I'm trying, uh, multitasking here. Um, so you're, you're right, Nancy, the, the shift does go up, uh, but so there, there's two different metrics uh, that, that we look at. Uh, the gap has kind of been the most significant one um, over the years, uh, so that does come down, but here, yes, the shift does increase. Thank even you. Even on proposed rates. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, so any final comments from the finance slash audit team? I mean, not audit, um, assessors. All finance, all finance. <laughs> I don't think we have anything additional for tonight. All right. So if you could send those documents ahead of time, we could take a look. I'll sure. make sure that um, Richard, Freddie, and Nancy um, obtain those as well. And, and Kathy, Kathy, did you want to say something? Okay, <laughs> I'll make sure you all get the um, documents as well and we'll see what happens on Tuesday. But if you can have the discussion with the mayor to use more free cash, that would be awesome as well. All right, everybody have a great weekend. I'll see you next you Tuesday. Too. All right, bye-bye.